Good morning, everyone, for me as well. People have been asking me, what does it feel like to stand as VP of the MySQL community with the slide set in red and white and the Oracle logotype here? So this is the first time for me. It takes a bit of uh, time to get accustomed to, you, to this for you and for me as well. So in order for this to be a soft landing, I thought I would go back to my original colors with I, which I have been using in the previous years, like at the um, database egos panel, the scale out or scale up panel, or last year's uh, cloud, great open cloud shootout. In those panels, we've had some controversy. We've had people up here on stage and, and me asking some provocative questions. Well, this year I'm in charge of creating the controversy all alone. So the name of this presentation is perhaps a misnomer, State of the MySQL Community. I think Shiri did an excellent job of describing the State of the Community yesterday in her keynote. So in actual fact, what I will be talking about is not as much the State of the MySQL Community per se, but how the mapping of MySQL into Oracle is going, what's happening, uh, what has changed already, what will change soon, and what won't change with Oracle as a steward of MySQL. Now, I <clears throat> rewind back in time one year to the Users Conference 2009. I was a bit jet-lagged, just having flown in, and then somebody uh, I, I had my laptop on and uh, Skype was on there and I got a chat from a former ex mysql guy and a former employee of mine who said, oh gee, so what do you say now that Oracle has bought MySQL after all of, 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 of uh, these uh, thinkings going on? I said, what? And, and then I, I realized that there's a small window of time before I will be ordered not to blog about this. So I blogged about this, and, and I wrote this blog entry. It's called, What Hasn't Changed with MySQL? And, and it was written, jet-lagged, 5 a.m., 6 a.m. in the morning when I had read about it. And uh, I made a couple of, of statements in that blog, and I will return to these statements during this uh, presentation with the same header, what hasn't changed with MySQL. So you don't need to, to read those texts, we will, we will return to them. But then you can ask, so what happened after this blog entry and after the uh, users conference where uh, MySQL had this uh, Acquirer of the Year award given to Oracle? Well. We expected there to be a period of, of waiting, and, and that uh, waiting period it has some constraints, but that waiting period turned out to be slightly longer than, than what we expected. It's an exceptional state called business as usual. And what business as usual means is that nothing is as usual. It, it's a legal term saying that uh, life will be such that as an employee of either the company being acquired or the acquiring company, you will get your news through Google. So I have Google alerts and every morning I'm seeing what, what's happening and what these Google alerts say, well, sometimes it's things that, that I would dearly want to know. Other times it's things I dearly would want not to know, but the majority is ridiculous claims by various parties not founded in much of truth. And business as usual forces us or forced us inside uh, Sun to say nothing. There was no way of commenting about what's happening and that's of purely legal reasons that, that is what business as usual means. So this meant that all kinds of rumors, be they However ridiculous, they could just go on with a snowball effect and those who knew stuff uh, either at Sun or at Oracle could not comment upon it. 
Now, that's, of course, frustrating, as you can see from this picture, but it also had some personal advantages. So I could spend some, some of my time off, and one thing I did last year was I founded a religion. So I thought about, I mean, running a lot, and, and I think that it's a meditating uh, spiritual thing, so I thought, well, somebody could make running into a religion, and then I thought, well, why wouldn't it be I? So I founded Runism, the religion of running, using social media that run on MySQL. So of course, there was some connection to, to the uh, MySQL duties. So if you want to know more about this, go to runism.com, and there's uh, YouTube videos and what have you, Facebook and Twitter and so on. OK, but that's a side note. Uh, our expectations at uh, among the former MySQL AB employees about the acquisition were, of course, related to how things were working the earlier acquisition. So then I rewind back to Orlando 2008 when we were up on stage singing Hail and Gore. Um, that was mid-January, and that was when it was announced. So the equivalent date was like the users' conference last year of the announcement of Oracle buying Sun. And then we were all, no, none of us knew much, or just few of us who had been at earlier startups that had been acquired knew about this business as usual thing, and we were ex explained what it means and it will take a while. But it was so short, it was just one and a half months that we really didn't notice much of it at all. So a very short period of uncertainty. Now, the contrast to this is last year. Of course, people were, were asking, Lots, about, lots, lots of questions from us. Uh, and we had some photography being taken last year where I looked into the crystal ball, and, and I also wrote a blog entry about that. There's the URL for it. And I asked a couple of speculative questions, like, will there be significant performance improvements? Will there be new features, bug fixes, code contributions? Will there be successful forks? But I just concluded that by, by saying that, hey, uh, business usual forces me not, not to give these, these answers. Anyway, uh, let me now turn to this, what won't change about my SQL. What I predicted that wouldn't change the first three items of it. And I'm happy to note that that seems to be the case, that all of these three things will not change from now on either. So statement number one, there is still a huge base of MySQL users out there. They have economic interests that are independent of whoever owns MySQL. The users in the MySQL community come in all flavors, ranging from casual users to those who intimately know the inner workings of MySQL and have contributed to the, use, the code base. That won't change. Item number two, and I tried to write this during my jet lag in an order of priority. There's still a huge talent pool of MySQL experts in Sun Microsystems. Well, some of us actually technically still are in Sun Microsystems, like me in a country where, where Sun Microsystems still exist, but most of us now are at Oracle. And we come in support, in consulting, in training, in engineering, in other parts of Sun or Oracle. We have a strong loyalty towards the MySQL users that we have served over many years. So this is a picture from, the so last picture was from this very room, but this picture is from Prague at the MySQL uh, developers meeting. I seem to remember it was 2006. Now, speaking of talent pool, of course, something will change, and that is that uh, it's not just our talents any longer. I've come to learn that Oracle does have a few d database experts, too. Uh, the abbreviation we learned about last, uh, during yesterday's keynote by Shiri was OTN, and I think that's a three-letter acronym that we should remember, Oracle Technology Network. And here we have a, a geek from, from Oracle called Andy Mendelssohn. Well, geek might be not the totally most descriptive work. Yes, he is technically proficient, but he is a senior vice president in charge of, of databases. And the printout there is from OTN. 
And then for the third statement of what, what won't change. So that is about the licensing. MySQL is still licensed under the GPL. And I remember giving talks about MySQL since 2000 when I started working with it and since 2001 when I joined MySQL AB. And we had to convince our user base that it's a safe choice to use MySQL because of the licensing. So the logic here I captured in last year's blog entry by saying that the GPL license used to form a safety net for the users not certain about whether MySQL AB would follow the spirit of open source. It continued to do so with Sun Microsystems. And the open source license continues to provide a safety net for its user base, regardless of the owner of MySQL. Now, on top of this, we have seen strong, firm, clear statements from Oracle that GPL will continue. So I suppose we then have to wait. If we really want to be worried about this, we'll have to wait for the next acquirer of the year. But given the magnitude of the last acquirer of the year, I think we have to wait for a while for that. So that about those three statements, and I won't return to the blog entry any longer. I'm, I'm looking now at, at stuff that has changed up until this point in time. And I think one of the items we should recognize is what Oracle has been doing with free and open source software. And specifically here on this slide, we will see stuff about open source that Oracle has been doing before the acquisition of Sun. So we know from airports and elsewhere about unbreakable Linux. There are great, considerable uh, contributions to Apache. There is Zen. And there are, we shouldn't, of course, forget about InnoDB as, as uh, an open source initiative through, uh, that, that, that Oracle has pushed, pushed before this uh, acquisition already. So, so that's, that's a, like another starting point of this reasoning about what has changed and what, what, what will change and what is similar. So hey, we come into a company that does have open source as a tradition, although with a different uh, focus than, than Sun had and not bragging about it in the same way as, 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 as we did at Sun. Then for a slightly more important um, mental thing to understand about what is changing and, and what will be changing, and I'm, I've tried to capture several thoughts into this slide about MySQL maturing. So let me start from the picture there that I took at uh, Seabit in Germany, 2003. Sadly, I'm not only responsible for taking the picture, but also for giving the input to the chart. The, the, the chart is about MySQL 3.22. Now, ancient history, OK, but anyway, 3.22, 3.23, 4.0, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, You won't see much of the scale there, but there's a, a list of all of the versions and, and what features they have and will have and, and uh, when they will be going. GA, or just production, as we used to call it. Then it was alpha, beta, gamma, and production. Now, in um, uh, the spring of 2003, we had written something there about MySQL cluster, but we hadn't really heard anything about NDB and, and uh, Ericsson yet. So it was a slightly risky and tentative announcement about what will happen. But uh, what's, what's even more uh, uncomfortable when reading the, the details of that is that we were announcing the uh, production GA date of MySQL 5.0 <clears throat> about one and a half year before it actually then happened. And many of us remember that when 5.0 was announced, not everybody was exactly happy about the maturity of 5.0. We were deemed as having introduced it too early before it deserved the stability label of, of GA. 
Now, why did I say this uh, at the slide about MySQL maturing? Well, we have a logic at a company the size of MySQL AB, and there's a different logic when you uh, are in a company the size of Sun, and then a different yet at Oracle. When it comes to the way you comply to all kinds of, of, of regulations. And the bigger the company, the more care you need to take to follow things like Sarbanes-Oxley. We know what happens in, in uh, commerce when people are lax about interpreting uh, uh, the, the finances and, and, and use innovation in the wrong place, uh, in the wrong department of the company. So, there are going to be stronger corporate controls about what we can say. Now, how that will show towards us as, as the community of MySQL might not always seem totally logical, because we have had a certain tradition which is compatible with open source uh, about saying what we're working at and being very open about statements on the future Oh, we'll do this in 5.0 and we'll do that in 5.1 and then we'll have 5.4 and whatnot. Now, that is not going to continue. But the reason I started by this picture is what value is there in, future prediction, in the future predictions that we gave in the past? Not much. So, Speculations, they really were speculations, and we did not fulfill on them, uh, and I'm by no means proud of us not having fulfilled our timeliness uh, predictions in the past. We will not do so any longer, so the question is then, will you really lose anything? So revenue recognition and auditability are words that are not frequently uh, mentioned in discussions about open source. Uh, accessibility, security, yes, th those are the reasons and those are the areas that corporate uh, controls force us to do changes. The effect will show in what we say about the future releases of MySQL and just suffice it to say we will not be able to say as much. But my conclusion then of course is what we said in the past might not have helped you as, uh, so much either. So then Another very important thing that has changed, and that is leadership. So this is a bit unfair. The, the, the picture at, at the left, I took it in San Rancho San Antonio, we were discussing uh, MySQL engineering in 2005, and, and the two gentlemen with whom I discussed it were not totally of the same opinion about uh, how things should be done and what the decisions should be. And I think it hasn't been, a, uh, I mean, many of us have seen those two gentlemen uh, not totally being in consensus since, so it shouldn't be a secret by now. But that's, of course, not the leadership that has changed to Edward Screven at the right. We have other, uh, the leadership has been through Sun lately. Uh, the point of this slide, though, is that people may say various things or have various pictures of, of Oracle. One of these pictures, though, I think is truthful, and that is execution is something that Oracle has under control. So leadership means that decisions are being taken. They might not always be the decisions that everybody would want to be taken, but hey, it's much better to take a decision and live by it and go on and, and continue than keeping all options open and not taking decisions. So leadership has changed, and I think that will profoundly reflect on how MySQL will continue to be developed. So another thing that has changed is attitude. So most of that, or some of that changed a long time ago. The picture here involves another MySQL founder, David, taking a boat trip in Stockholm. He's a database company founder, and then behind him is another boat by another database company founder. And we used to poke fun of things like that. Uh, so that was quite a number of years ago, and we still chuckle at it and, and have fun, but I think that this coexistence meant that attitude, to a certain degree, changed already a long time ago, uh, and the pivotal event for this was the acquisition of InnoDB 
and Heike Turi, whom we see here also on the uh, uh, database egos panel on the screen. So, so coexistence. But that's about uh, attitude changing a long time ago. Of course, during this year of uncertainty, attitude has continued to change. So on the left, we see a picture I took at the <laughs> conference last year, lost and found, lost company called Jonathan Schwartz, 801, son lost. Well, that was part of the emotional process uh, to think about stuff like that. Um, since then, it didn't take long until we saw a happily jumping Sakila in Redwood Shores, which is the, the se second picture here. So, so I think that should be the symbol of uh, attitude changing later on. But then looking at what this leadership change means, I think that's where, where you cannot just have a, a, a small chuckle and a laughter at, at, at our uh, emotional processes, uh, that's where you will see the actual changes happening on the code level and, and feature level. So all of these years when I've been talking about MySQL, um, I've been stating about the three core product values of MySQL. Stability, performance, and ease of use. We haven't always had them in the same order. We changed performance, stability, ease of use, so that stability is the first one based on feedback from a customer advisory board. But those have been the three values all the time. So now I'm looking at the question, what might improve? And I'm saying might here because the proof is in the pudding. That's what I've learned from working with the community. Making firm statements about the future is not the way to go. It's just about setting expectations. And my expectation is that our execution on this core product value will improve. So we have Sherlock Sakila on the left finding bugs and happily then having them, them corrected. So I do expect that to become better. Then as for the other core values, what might improve? The execution on performance. Well, we saw from Edward's slides that it actually already has improved, and I expect that to continue. Some of you might now say, ha ha, look at Sakila there with 5.4. Now where is MySQL 5.4? So I think that execution also could improve when it comes to release numbering. <laughs> uh, the third area, what might improve execution on ease of use. So here uh, we, we saw some demos and having MySQL improve the ease of use is, is clearly an expectation that I have. So I wouldn't he again come with any, any promises, but that's what I expect to happen. Now I return to the question of what will remain as it has been. So what might continue in more or less the same fashion? And that is the focus on ubiquity. So this is a, a picture of the world before the volcanic uh, eruption on Iceland. I'm slightly worried about my, I don't know whether you've read about it, but there's a cloud uh, of ash, volcanic ashes spreading over most of Europe. So air traffic has been canceled in uh, perhaps along the route that I expect to take tonight. But OK, that's a side issue. Though the point here with this slide is that the downloading of MySQL during one month, I think it was in early 2008, is symbolized by a blue, light blue dot here. And uh, that goes to show how ubiquitous MySQL was at that point in time. The focus on ubiquity, as we heard Edward state, will continue. And just so that you see how big this is, uh, there's a picture of the same map at night. Of course, this is daylight over all of the planet. Then we have another picture with night all over the planet. But that picture is such that even just from the dots, you can almost recognize uh, the uh, continents, at least North America and Europe and, and uh, Pacific Asia. So, so that will continue, I expect it to. A high priority for MySQL has always been the community. And that was something that 
started and defined MySQL. So before I started looking at MySQL in, in late last century and before I worked with it professionally in 2000, the community was the thing that defined MySQL. That was, that was the DNA of it. So what I now see with Oracle is that the definition of a community it always lies in the eye of the beholder. People mean so many different things when they talk about community. But as we saw from Shiri's presentation, hey, uh, there are commonalities and there are things that MySQL provides the community with that uh, Oracle doesn't and vice versa. But the respectful relationship for, towards the community remains. So now we come to an uh, exciting point here in this uh, relationship to the community. Um, not everything will remain exactly the way that it has been so far. Some of the things will change, such as stuff getting a new name. So we used to hand out the MySQL Community Awards. What's happening now is uh, we're naming Oracle ACE directors in the area of MySQL. Now, this is not a one-on-one -on -one mapping, so it's not something where you should expect that, okay, every year at a conference, that's when the Oracle ACEs for MySQL will be pulled out of the sleeve. They can, that, that's something that can happen at other points in time as well. But this is uh, the closest correspondence to the MySQL Community Awards that we have. So it's now my pleasure to announce the first three Oracle Aces and ask them to come up here on stage. So the first Oracle Ace director, you already know her. It is Shiri Kritza Cabral, working with the Pythium Group here in the United States. Hey Shiri, can you show what you get if you if you become an Oracle Ace director? black on black, uh, warm fleece. It's a waterproof fleece, very nice, very smooth. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. So we need two more people up here on the catwalk. Great. Stay? Yes, please stay up here. The following mannequin, Ronald Bradford for the US scale, United States. Hey. And the third, Paul McCullum, Prime Based Technologies, PBXT, Germany. <laughs> Hi there. So you probably sold yours on eBay already, or? <laughs> okay, so let's have a big hand of, a round of applause for the Oracle Ace Directors. Thank you. Well, I thought I would need to do something that, that adds to the credibility of the presentation because if I'm painting a too rosy picture, you will not believe what I'm saying. So I was thinking, um, of course, there might be some adverse effects as well of the acquisition. Some things might deteriorate. And, and yes, there are things that might deteriorate. And then again, this is just an expectation setting. It might be that it won't. So I think the execution on Scandinavian drinking might not remain at the same level, nor the level of humor in ads for MySQL 5.1, where we see five vodka shots and a dot, which is a Salmiak candy, and a vice beer on the right. So, 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 so that's, that's a, an area where I have some worries. But just to make us feel better again, I'm returning to the standard path of what might improve. So uh, what might improve, I think, is the execution towards Linux distros. Now, it's not as if we haven't loved the Linux distros uh, up until now. But we've also seen areas where, where the Linux distros haven't totally been 
happy with what we have delivered. So uh, in line with general leadership changes and, and focusing on the important stuff, this is some area that, where there can be improvements. And the picture here is from a blog entry by Giuseppe. Uh, after FOSDEM in uh, uh, February, we had a, a Linux distro meeting in, in Brussels, one of Oracle's favorite cities in Europe. And, and, and discussed with uh, our, our main contacts in the various uh, Linux distros. And we, it's important to understand here that we doesn't mean the community team uh, uh, showing their friendly faces or hopefully friendly faces and, and saying nice things. This is, uh, involves the main people deciding about stuff in MySQL engineering. So we have the most senior guys of MySQL engineering, in the build team, and so on, at this very same, same uh, table. Um, improvements can also be seen in the execution towards the LAMP stack. So LAMP stack has been our native stack, and, and the focus will continue there. MySQL cannot be imagined as, as having a good future without serving the LAMP stack well. But there's an area where, where there will be change, and it has been uh, announced, and it has been speculated about, and, and I expect it fully to happen, and that is the stronger emphasis on, on Windows. So we will see things in this, in this area. Now, now I've been saying a lot about, about uh, what we have changed uh, and how we have changed and what will change. Um, I'm also interested in, in you and your opinion. So I prepared a, a slide with a couple of, of questions. Now the first one is part of this emotional catharsis. Uh, this, I will ask you in both cases to vote, but, but there's a different way of voting for bullet point one and for bullet point two. So for bullet point one, I will, I will ask people who say MySQL to say it first in unison, and then for those two who say MySQL to say it. And, and the easiest part is for those who don't care. You just shut up. <laughs> so let us now hear from everybody who says MySQL in unison. MySQL, okay? Now, what about those who say MySQL? Can we have now my S Q L. Okay, I think I think I heard a clear vote there. It's it's the the lights are so blinding here that I couldn't even have have counted a number of hands. But the the the, the voice feedback was clear. Now the second one, um, it says here, do a John Cage. I have to explain what that is. So, I was profoundly impressed with a gentleman called John Cage at the. Uh, Java 1 event when I attended it sometimes last century. So instead of just saying, how many of you, and asking people to, to raise their hands, he, he forced people to, I don't know whether force is the right thing, but he somehow persuaded people to stand up. And I, I wonder whether I can pull a, a John Cage. So I will soon, after I explain what the question is, ask you, or some of you, whether uh, in case you fulfill the criteria to stand up. So I'm interested here in how long you've been with the MySQL community, uh, but specifically at these conferences, who have been arranged by O'Reilly since 2005, but we had two preceding conferences, 2003 and 4. So I would now like, in practice, most of you to stand up. I, I think so. So everybody who has been at a MySQL conference before, Please stand up. OK. Now, those of you who were, who have only been at the 2009 conference, please sit down. OK. And those who have only been at uh, the last two years, 2008 and 9, please sit down. OK. Those for whom 2007 was the first conference, please sit down. Okay, 2006, 
five, four, three. Okay, so now these are the real old timers. Let's give them a <laughs> hand of applause. So, now everybody can sit down unless you're already ours. Thank you. Um, in uh, an attempt to continue this emotional journey of seeing MySQL having a new steward, I've inserted another red and white slide here. Uh, I'm sure you've seen this earlier times. Uh, it's supposed to be in everybody's presentation. And, and I don't know if anybody has spent lots of time on it, but what it basically says is that whatever I've said here is, is an infomercial. <laughs> so don't hold me, hold me to it. I think it's, uh, I mean, uh, I inserted it here so that, uh, uh, for the benefit of my boss and myself, so that the Oracle Marketing and PR department wouldn't hunt us, and I'm, I'm grateful for them for not shutting down the microphone during the presentation. So uh, if you've read this, I don't know what state of mind you are in, but um, <laughs> to, to conclude here, uh, I would like to give some acknowledgments specifically for this uh, slide set and presentation. So uh, I think these conferences wouldn't be what they are without Duncan's photography. So the pictures here of the O'Reilly official conference are by him. I, woo. The fun ones with the predictions of the, my, on, on Oracle by, by the uh, uh, crystal ball are by Julian Cash. <laughs> then I have some black and white pictures of myself. Fine, well, let's not have applause for everybody, but you could applaud for the Sakila cartoons by Richard Dushak. <laughs> so if you need cartoons, that's the guy to turn to. And then the motivational pictures with the uh, strange things happening at MySQL by Zach, fine. And, and the Oracle Ace pictures by, by Tony Cabral. And then the community picture, the picture of, of uh, Hey, Kituri was provided by one of, the, one of you guys. He's not here today, but he's been at, a, 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 at earlier conferences. So that concludes stuff for my part. If you have questions, then come and ask. Uh, talk to me. If you want to approach me, here are some coordinates. Uh, still at sun.com. Uh, and I have a couple of websites, Twitter and so on. So thank you. <laughs>